No, not yet. It's happening. But you, we should see you, no? Um, later after the introduction, right? Okay. You'll see me yet. Okay, and welcome everyone. Welcome to the Pussy Riot YouTube page. Welcome to the University of the Underground too. Welcome to this most urgent conversation, everyone. So if some of you didn't get the memo, uh, we are rescheduling the conversation uh, between Noam Chomsky and Nadia sometime this week or next, but we will not advertise it this time. So it will just pop up here on this YouTube channel. So best that you really sign up on it. And by doing that, you also actually support all of the media release uh, to do with Pussy Riot. So this week and next week, um, we have a lot of very urgent conversation to take. You know, it is about the time that we run a lot of uh, events to advocate for plurality, but also for pluralistic thinking. Because today, uh, we wonder, all of us, and we also wonder, and we want to wonder with all of you, what does it take to be free? What does it take to think freely? And what does it take to actually stop totalitarianism regime for, from happening? And actually from disguising themselves as Putin is doing right now in, in Russia as a democracy. So we are in 2021 and yet people, our friends have been arrested, poisoned, killed uh, just because they think differently. So we wanted to have this conversation with Nadia we know that maybe some of you are disappointed that Chomsky is not here, but he will be there. Uh, and many of our friends are going to be there because we're not going to disappear. We're not going to be silenced. We're just going to be standing here and remain until our friends are not arrested anymore. Uh, and we, we wanted to discuss with all of you what does it take to maintain freedom and how can we offer alternative altogether. So I will be joined by some of our friends, some of the board members of the University of the Underground, some of our former students as well. And we're gonna discuss uh, with you and with Nadia what the current situation in Russia is about. So if some of you didn't follow the news, our friend Navalny is currently, you know, has been arrested and has been sentenced to three and a half years in prison. Masha of Pussy Riot is currently facing two years in jail just for supporting uh, some of the protests, um, you know, that have been developed around Navalny. Uh, also, Navalny Bowser is uh, currently uh, being arrested. And just now, today, the editor-in-chief of Pussy Riot funded media outlet Media Zona has been put in jail for 25 days just uh, for events and actions that actually didn't participate in. So, um, I think all of this kind of like show you the urgency of this conversation. And this is why I'm also extremely proud of uh, my most courageous friend to date, Nadia, who is uh, standing here uh, with all of us. Uh, and she needs all of the support in the world possible. She needs all of the international pressure that any of you can do. Uh, and I'm extremely you know, proud of her. And I just wanted her to, you know, talk to you, but also think with you as to what else can we do? What else can we do to try and like uh, uh, get our friends out of jail? And what else can we do to support the freedom of thinking all over the world and specifically here in this case in Russia? So Nadia, can you just kind of tell us what the current situation in Russia is for you, for your friends? And also we're going to speak about your response to the current situation. You released a video on the 1st of February, and we're going to talk about that. And also we will be welcoming all of your questions that currently appear into the uh, chat section of the YouTube. Finally, thank you so much for uh, organizing this event. Um, I'm so sorry that Noam couldn't join us today, um, as we all are, but um, I know we're trying to reschedule. So guys, keep um, keep tight. Uh, we are going to come back with Noam, uh, but today we want to talk with you about pressing issues of political prisoners in Russia. Uh, just today, uh, we have received the message that the editor-in-chief of a media outlet that's called Media Zona, uh, the media outlet that we founded with my fellow members from Pussy Riot, including Masha Lohina, um, 
uh, he was sent to jail for 25 days for not participating in a protest action and for not posting about it. He was accused of posting about a protest action about which he did not post. So it's, um, we're experiencing an incredible unprecedented wave of political repressions in Russia. What uh, the government is trying to do currently is to neutralize everyone who they think is a high-profile high activist. Whoever they put on this list, they try to neutralize. And um, already my friend and my comrade, almost my sister, Masha Lokhina, who spent two years in jail with me in 2012, 2014, um, she, um, she was arrested. She was put in the same jail where we started our prison pass. And she spent her two days without knowing what's next. And uh, she might expect it that she will end up in jail again for a couple of years. But luckily, luckily, they chose house arrest for her. So currently she's under house arrest. And uh, just yesterday, another member of Pussy Riot, Lisa Stein, was um, arrested uh, under the same criminal case. Uh, they are accused of posting about the protest action on the 23rd of January in support of Alexei Navalny. And of course, one of the most important topics of this conversation is us trying to support Alexei Navalny. And I'm aware that some people are not sharing all of his political views, me neither, but it's not a conversation about that right now. It's a conversation about um, that not even one person has to be jailed for his or her or their political views. Alexei Navalny was sentenced yesterday for two years and eight months in jail because he was trying to overthrow Vladimir Putin. And we stand with Navalny and I'm really looking forward to time when I can uh, be in a really true democratic Russian Russia in truly free parliament where I can um, hate Navalny for <laughs> some of his political views. But as for now, I'm standing right here with him in solidarity against Vladimir Putin. So Nadia, tell us, because this is not the first time that this is happening. It feels like we are repeating his story, isn't it? So tell us what happened before. Also, some of uh, some... what did you do? What did you do about it? How did you, you know, how did you manage to get released as well? Привет, ребята. Мы сегодня говорим в основном на английском, но вы можете задавать вопросы ближе к там к той секции, когда мы будем отвечать на вопросы на русском. Я эти вопросы прочту, но или их не поймет, потому что она русский не понимает. Поэтому мы заложение к ней будем большую часть нашего нашей беседы вести на английском. Окей, okay, но uh, в конце вы можете задавать вопросы, я отвечу на вопросы на русском. А сейчас вернемся к английскому. Um, how, how did we manage to survive? Well, the um, international pressure and in, uh, pressure from inside of the country really helped us. Um, we, we were one of the most supported political prisoners um, in the whole history of Russia, I believe. And we were extremely lucky because honestly, I don't think we made something different from all other people who, who were sent to jails because of their political views. And just as, um, just to know, just happy, lucky circumstances brought to um, Pussy Riot having so much uh, attention inside Russia and outside. So uh, what, what it made for us, it, it definitely made us safer um, inside jail, um, especially now, 2021, after we know that Putin uses nerve agents, poisons against his political um, rivals, we know that it's extremely important to have all the eyes on Navalny to be sure that he's not going to be poisoned again. And it's uh, I'm not saying that it's going to work 100%, because Putin is truly insane person. But if we want to be on the right side of history, um, we want to be able to do, we want to we want to do whatever we can to be sure that we made everything we could to protect those who are in jail right now and those who are in hands of murderers. 
Um, also, we were released two, um, two months before the end of our term. Um, so we served 22 months instead of 24 months, which is kind of not a big deal, but when you are in jail, every day counts. So I believe because of all the pressure that's been put on, um, on our government, we had to be released as long as, um, al alongside with Khodorkovsky uh, before the Olympic Games in 2014. So basically the more international pressure that can be, the, the more chances there will be a release. All kinds of pressure. It doesn't have to be international pressure, you know. Um, I believe in global solidarity. I, I'm an anarchist, so right. I don't really believe in borders. So I'm I'm not one of those who say that only international pressure matters. No, it's not right. But also, I'm not one of those who think that international pressure is not valid because um, it's imperialism. I don't think so. I think that um, activists have to stand with each other in solidarity. Um, and if governments and big corporations, they uh, form um, alliances and trusts to protect their interests, their shady, shitty interests, we have to do it as well. And that's why I'm really happy about this conversation because it looks like these networks of solidarity between activists are really happening. And tell me, Nadia, what have you done this time uh, to try and get your friends released? So shall we, I mean, I don't know if I can share my screen, but I can show the video, some bits of the video, and maybe you can run us through, you know, what the video is and how you put it together. So can you see my screen now? I don't know. Yeah. I, I can see your screen. Uh, I can see your screen. Um, yeah, I believe everyone I'm showing the rage video. So this is a video that you released on the 1st of February. Uh, and that everybody is encouraged to also like repost, share, and um, tell us a bit about the whole process of making that video, but then also, you know, what is your hope with this video? Um, well, it was my emotional reaction on the um, recent events in Russia, what happened over the course of the last few weeks. When uh, Alexei Navalny came back to Russia on the 17th of January, he made this courageous act. He um, he committed uh, an act of radical courage because um, he knew that most likely he's going to be sent to jail. And why? Because he dared to survive his, uh, his murder. Um, and after that happened, after the 23rd of January happened with brutal arrests um, of people all around Russia, I realized that um, I need to use my ultimate weapon, which is art. And we had this video prepared uh, for later. Um, we prepared this video and I cherished this video dearly. I wanted to release it in um, April or May with uh, the release of our album that's called Rage or Basit as well. Um, and it was, you know, one of those big pieces of art that you keep dearly to yourself to release with the album and make a big fucking deal about it, right? So, um, but a few days before the release, I had this feeling of urgency that I have to react right now. And obviously I was writing on social networks. Um, obviously I was, um, I was active online, but uh, I realized that probably the most, um, the most uh, effective thing that I can do is to uh, come up with a nerd piece. And initially I was thinking to write another song, another song uh, that would be dedicated to the palace of Putin on the Black Sea and uh, to Alexei Navalny, Tomasz Alokhina. But then I just went back to the material that I already had and I realized that this song Rage is exactly about this moment. Mm -hmm. um, and um, just in a few days we prepared the release. Um, everyone from my team kind of hated me a little bit because that's not what you do with the music industry. You know, like people normally prepare releases for a month. Um, so it was like really, really quick and uh, kind of crazy, but our um, art and activism always comes first to me. And so no matter in which industry I work, if it's art industry or music industry, I don't, I never really obey to their rules and I always follow my political intuition. So that's why we released um, Rage now. So, um... You know, like someone called Anna Arendt say that to begin something new into the world, that is action. And I guess like for you, the way that you understand activism, right? And you, you've just said it in some ways, it's like you see a, a real role in terms of how the popular culture 
can help you to kind of disseminate very strong, you know, political message, right? So um, what do you think, you know, what do you think could be like the new means of action that can be used maybe by some of the people that are watching today as to trying to fight against, you know, this current political regime in uh, Russia, uh, but also everywhere in the world where, you know, the freedom of thought is not. Do you think that popular culture is the way to go? Or do you think that, and I think, you know, we're gonna invite, like we have a lot of people joining us now that also are kind of like thinking about ways and means by which we can develop a form of action. But I'd love to know from your perspective, do you think that popular culture is a way to go uh, together with the arts? And how, you know, how did that happen for you and Pussy Riot in general? I personally really love popular culture. And I think the role of some and activism is you, you have to follow your intuition. You have to follow what you love. Uh, you have to follow um, something that brings joy to you. And uh, when I talk about activism, I always say that it's important to, to do something that makes you happy, right? Um, for a lot of time, I wish I could be someone else. For a lot of time, I was looking at politicians like AOC, like Navalny, and I wish I could be them because I thought they're much more effective. Um, I wanted to be an extrovert. I wanted to be um, all, like, I, I wanted to be them. And uh, it wasn't a part of my personality. It never was part of my personality. Um, it's much more suitable for my personality to be an artist, um, to a person who is um, mixing my cocktail here, um, like somewhere, nobody knows where, um, silently, um, sometimes without talking with people for days, and then putting this piece of art in the world. So um, the reason why I'm saying that this is because um, answering your question, I could not give a universal answer for everyone. Uh, I think you should um, use your own unique talent, ability, thing you like, or even your hobby to help promote activist agenda. And that what happened with my music project within Pussy Riot Movement, because we have different art projects within Pussy Riot Movement. And I'm not on the art projects, um, media projects and human rights projects, but I'm the one who is leading the music project within Pussy Riot. So, and personally, I've been always obsessed with popular culture, but also I've been always obsessed with radical politics. So for me, um, it's always been a big, biggest question in front of me, how we can actually combine one and another. And it's not as easy as it sounds because it, it actually, it's actually pretty fucking difficult, but it's really exciting for me because and as a kid, I've been listening to Britney Spears, Shakira, Christina Aguilera, um, but also Slipknot, and uh, but also System of a Down, who um, uh, and and their song. Um, I've been all, always fascinated with System of a Down song, Prison. Um, so that's that's kind of what I do uh, in my music project uh, within Pussy Red. And so, what do you think? Like the people that are watching today, right? So we we want them to be into you know putting some action out there as well. Uh, what would you recommend them to do? What do you what do you see is the kind of the the mode of action here? Can they maybe start new projects? Can they contribute somewhere? Can they do you know? I mean, it can be music. It can be something else. Um, I think again, follow your talent and um, just not the basic rule is not don't be silent and never try uh, and never think that your action is not big enough um well even if you are on isolation and you can't leave your house you can record um, music you can draw painting you can um you can make a music video you can write a novel you can write post you can you can make youtube stream you can film a movie within your own house you can hang a banner outside of your window you can go to the roof and make a concert um from the roof of your house even if you live in the field you still can make um make an action in the field and then upload it to social media the good thing about social media is actually um, it kind of helps us to decentralize the political world. Um, as I was growing up, I was growing up in Norilsk. I was a little girl and I was living in the very north of Siberia. And 
Um, it's re it's a region that's really separated from Russia. We even call ourselves Iceland Island, though technically it's not an island, but we feel like we're living on an island, right? Um, so when I realized I want to be a political activist, the only one way for me was to move to Moscow because it's the capital, it's the place where you can actually um, move them think some things around and influence politics. But I feel like it's not like that anymore. And the beauty of social media and um, beauty of conscious use of the, um, yeah, cause conscious use of digital tools is they can be literally anywhere um, and still influencing the political agenda. So um, I, I guess the, the rule is not to be silent and never think that your voice is too little because often this is what stops us from making an action to think that, oh, I'm not Lady Gaga, my voice doesn't matter so much. But it actually does matter. Um, and just don't let this um, insecurity stop you. So Nadia, you know, when we were putting this conversation together, and I want to say to all of the chat that we are receiving on the YouTube channel that this conversation with Shamsky and you is definitely happening. Uh, we are just rescheduling it at the moment. You know, I mean, I know as well, I will never let you down, Nadia. You've always told me that, uh, you know, this was one of your, you know, a dream for you to meet Chomsky. You also have your hamster who is called Chomsky. So we don't want to, you know, disappoint uh, your hamster either. So we will make that happen for sure. But uh, meanwhile, I really wanted to have like a lot of people here who have just joined us in the Zoom call that also have developed different form of activism or different form of thinking as to how they can showcase you know their their disagreements with the norms or their disagreement with status quo or their disagreement with regimes or politics uh, and so i don't know if peaches christ is on the line joshua granel aka peaches christ who is uh, one of the most incredible american you know drag artists uh, that has been fighting pretty much all of her life uh, where are you Pitchy i'm here christ. can you see me and hear me Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Thank you for joining okay. us. I mean, I'd love to know, okay. and you know, while we are all here, we are brainstorming there. So please, whoever is watching this YouTube channel as well, send us some ideas. Let's all try and brainstorm as to how can we be the most effective possible to get our friends released from jail. Uh, and then I'd love to know from you, because Joshua, you found yourself in multiple different situation, uh, and maybe you can run us through some of them and how you and your friends your drag friends have managed to kind of get out of, you know, them. Well, I, I first uh, really agree with so much of what Nadia is saying um, and come from a very similar place as far as my, the intersection of my interests in pop culture, but also activism and radical activism and politics. And so I think in a sense, that's why I was so drawn to drag uh, because of people like Divine and, you know, movies like the Rocky Horror Picture Show, which really subverted the way we looked at gender and sexuality and queerness. And, you know, in, in many ways, drag queens have always been at the forefront of political movements from Stonewall uh, in New York City to the Compton cafeteria riots in San Francisco. Um, and so there's this sort of, I think, bravery that, uh, I was drawn to when it when, when thinking about dr drag and the act of um, using drag. And so it was um, not an accident that I named myself after Jesus because I was really angry with the church and wanted to, in a sense, use my form of entertainment uh, to take some power away from the name Christ. You know, the way that name was used against me as a child and my friends, uh, the way I was raised in the Catholic church and in Catholic school, um, that was a very, you know, you could not speak out against the Bible. You could certainly not speak out against Jesus. You know, these were these sort of almighty, you know, things that were used to take choice away from women. Uh, to subjugate women, to uh, keep queer people suicidal. Um, you know, so for me, becoming Peaches Christ and making a mockery, you know, my show was called Midnight Mass, uh, and making a mockery of the church and parodying the church uh, was a fun, very, very fun way to be an activist. Um, 
But, you know, of course, with that, you know, I've been protested. I've been threatened with, um, you know, I've had shows canceled when I arrived in uh, Belfast, you know, um, I had done a, a radio interview with the BBC and, um, you know, our show, uh, government officials threatened to put me in jail in Northern Ireland. So, you know, it's like, this is, uh, for me, an exciting, for as many doors have closed because I became Peaches Christ and many, many have, especially in Hollywood, um, where I've been sitting at meetings and, and the first thing a manager and an agent uh, says is that I have to change my stage name. Uh, for me, the art and the um, the creativity and being, I guess, true to myself um, come ahead for me, um, uh, you know, putting career. I, I mean, if I was going to put a career um, first, I never would have done any of this shit, you know. Um, I would have <laughs> would have done something way, way less offensive. Um, but I'll say that the satisfaction of um, having audiences of people who also grew up religious find solace uh, in a space where we can take that power away through through laughter and comedy, um, you know, has been a very important part of my uh, so, activism. So horror movie, everyone, you know, that is one that can be used as a genre to also, you know, kind of discuss very important topic and societal issues, I guess, yeah. Do you have a question, Joshua, that you wanted to ask maybe to uh, Nadia, as we are like, you know, or you can think about it while you, or you are, I don't know, you tell me. <laughs> I, I'm more or less just wanted to say I'm a huge fan. I've been, you know, uh, following uh, your story since, you know, it became an international inspiration for so many of us. And it's just, it's exciting to get to hear you speak and, um, you know, keep up the good work. And you've been an inspiration to so many of us around the world. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you so much, Joshua. And I am Paola as well, joining us to speak about the power of the arts, architecture. Uh, Paola, are you there joining us? I'm here, I'm here. Moma. My video. I don't know why, but I cannot turn on my video, but that's okay. Who cares? I mean, Moma mm -hmm. is a place that I know is really dear to Nadia because our friend Mariana, Marina Abanovic was actually sitting there for so long, looking yeah. truly and deeply into the eyes of every single person that was going through Moma at the time. And Paola, you're the senior curator at Moma, and you've been doing a lot of work on how design, architecture, and other forms are very relevant to political actions and how, you know, to this old conversation, which is, you know, in some ways trying to think about like different ways and means by which we can take action. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah, there's many, there's many different ways. And I have to say, I feel really in awe of all of you because I sit a little bit behind the scenes, but I guess it takes people like me and other colleagues of mine, we try to support as much as possible what artists do by giving them a platform, of course, and also by giving them as much as possible a way to broadcast. And I have to say, there are quiet ways in which curators or semi-quiet ways in which curators can also help. I remember, for instance, when uh, our previous American president, whose name will go unnamed, um, declared all of Muslim countries as like countries non grata and stopped all the all the um, in, not even immigration, but just allowing people in at the airports in the span of one day. I mean, a museum like MoMA is big and and tends to be a little slow, very slow, almost like an elephant. But in the span of like one day and a half, my colleagues had switched one of the main galleries and had shown only work by artists from those countries. So all of a sudden you do a little bit what you're doing right now for Nadia. You just try to broadcast as much as possible. In, in my own personal way, I think that one of the most interesting works that uh, I have done with my colleagues is the series of salons. You know, we try to prove that museums can be the R&D of society. They're not only places where you go to uh, look at art, but you also go there to listen uh, from people like you that are here on this call, how to deal with death 
how to deal with aging, how to deal with silence or how to deal with protest, right? So we become a space where you can gather people that can then inspire and help others. And also there was another uh, project that was particularly interesting that was about design and violence. There was an attempt to understand the um, manifestations of violence in contemporary society by looking at design objects that have an ambiguous relationship with it. For instance, when there was the, uh, the revolution in Turkey a few years ago in, um, uh, in, in the main square, you used to see um, all of these protesters spraying into each other's eyes what seemed like soap detergent. And it's only afterwards that we realized that that was milk. So the soap detergent bottles were filled with milk to counter the effects of tear gas. So all of a sudden you see an object that is turned around and reconfigured for a particular context. And this happens all the time. There's from, from a, the standpoint point of a design curator, um, moments of emergency, of crisis are moments in which a little bit what Nadia was saying, you know, you just, the best of you comes out, you find a way to use your ingenuity and to use what you have at your disposal, whether it's the roof or a detergent soap bottle. I mean, I think that's, um, you know, like, the Silk Museum, for example, has been extremely instrumental into the Georgian Revolution, you know, where they hosted a lot of youth while they were like being arrested and so forth. So I think it's a very, you know, very interesting angle to think about, like if anyone is watching that is having a museum or a roof and that can host some of this, uh, you know, some of the, well, some of the people that are currently, you know, protesting in Russia. I think that would be also something really uh, valuable from that conversation that can be taken away. Uh, Alexander, I know you're there, I can see you. I also wanted you to tell us about a project you're working on, the Black Arctic, where you're looking at you know, how we can rewrite the narrative against uh, and away from system of oppression by building this kind of new territory that is set in the Arctic for black radical imagination. I mean, how does that work? And how do you use fiction? You know, how can Afrofuturism become as well a new way to think about, you know, well, activism in some form? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Nelly. Um, also, Nadia, it's good to see you again. I think last time we saw each other, we were in the basement in Amsterdam jamming. Uh, yeah. And, and drinking <laughs> beers or something, I seem to recall. Um, <laughs> Also, it's kind of like really interesting to hear about um, about your story. I, I've been kind of like really interested in like our, our new president's relationship with Putin. Uh, I remember like when he was vice president, like back in 2011, he met Putin and um, said to his face that he looked like a man without a soul. Uh, and I feel like that is, uh, yeah, one of the reasons why I voted for him, because how do you tell a man like that? <laughs> those words right in his face. Um, but I guess like uh, it, to answer Nelly's question about uh, the black radical imagination, I, I kind of feel like in, in this case and in, in kind of what also what you're doing uh, is, is that the power of dreaming and the power of, uh, of imagination and the power of this interrelation where a lot of our practices exist, I, I think is potentially extremely powerful um, and creates such a transformative energy. Um, for uh, for positive change in the future. I, I, I think in my case with like the Black Arctic, um, it kind of exists uh, in, in the space between anti-Black racism and ecological destruction, um, kind of similar to uh, eco-feminism. <clears throat> um, it's kind of like a Black radical ecology. And in between this interrelation, it kind of looks at uh, anti-black racism as a form of destruction akin to how the heteropatriarchy destroys uh, the natural realm um, through any means necessary. Uh, so the black art that kind of positions the ecolo ecological and uh, blackness uh, together, kind of marrying them together to, yeah, transform mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully potentially create some kind of facet of, of, of change, but, but we'll see. And do you have a question for Nadia as well? Um, I, I don't have a specific question. Uh, okay, no. well, out then. <laughs> no, <I'm joking. laughs> 
I mean, I mean, to be honest, um, I, I'm still taking all of this. Uh, I'm, I'm taking a lot of this in because um, everything that happened in the past few weeks, uh, mm -hmm. everything that happened this fucking, oh, excuse me, this month alone um, is wild. Uh, so I'm still in the process of, of uh, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, how do you do it, Nadia? You're also like extremely busy. You're on like a media blitz as well. How do you keep up the, the energy? How do you keep up uh, the fight, uh, especially uh, these days? I, I guess that would be a good motivation for, for the rest of us as well. Um, well, I don't sleep much. Um, but um, I, I get most of my energy from, from people I'm communicating with. And I guess um, that's the universal answer almost to every question about whether you get energy or courage. Uh, we, we get it from our communities, right? Like if we were just by ourselves, we, we, couldn't, we couldn't get it from anywhere. But um, I see, I, I, I look around and I see people who are not scared of people who are working day and night um, to achieve what we want. And we want to achieve the beautiful rush of the future. And um, people like um, Alexei Navalny and uh, his supporters, people like Marcia Lechner or Lucy Stein from Pussy Riot or and Victoria Narachsa, who just uh, was released from uh, 10 days in jail um, for participating in protests. Uh, people like them, they actually show you how um, how courageous and um, amazing human being can be. And just look at them and you're like, oh shit, I wanna be just like them. Um, and it motivates you. Nadia, I'm like we're receiving a lot of questions as well for you. So I'm just going to go through a few of them too. Um, you know, there is someone called Nikita Shekulin. Thank you for your question. You're saying, hello from Moscow. Please tell me your opinion about who can be another opposition leader in Russia today when uh, Alexei Navalny is currently in jail. Um, well, I think uh, uh, Putin has decided to literally follow the footsteps of Lukashenko. And this is um, really unfortunate for me to see, uh, but he is literally following his footsteps. He is um, beating the um, opposition, um, the protesters on the streets. Uh, and we see the police is getting more and more violent. Uh, it's not as bad as it got in uh, Belarus uh, the previous year, but um, it's definitely um, the the level of violence definitely much harder than it was uh, even one year ago. Um, and um, Putin has jailed his uh, main political um, um, opponent. And um, I guess, I guess, I mean, like, I don't have to be like really political scientist to get scientists to guess it, but I think Yulia Navalny is going to be the leader of this movement. Uh, while Alexei Navalny uh, is in jail and uh, later when he is out of jail, I really hope that she will stay in politics because she is amazing, smart, courageous woman who I definitely look up to. Uh, you also have a question from, uh, you know, well, yeah. He's saying that common people, some, yeah, whatever. Uh, common people support Putin. How are you gonna deal with that fact? Um, I mean, uh, so is uh, like someone is asking common people support Putin how are you going to deal with oh. that fact? but I mean this is maybe a question we can keep for when we have the conversation with Chomsky because we'll be discussing democracy and how democracy in some places is turning into totalitarian regimes to some level but that would be really interesting to discuss with Noam um, I can just share some of my thoughts on this um, obviously you can't I mean Obviously, people have the right to think um, whatever they want to think, and that's the whole point of um, of wanting to have democracy, right? So, um, a, right now, I do not believe that the majority of Russian people are actually supporting Putin, but maybe it was the case 10 years ago when, or 13 years ago when we started our activism, right? In 2007, maybe there was a majority of people who supported Putin, but it's... Um, the, the thing that I want to achieve, I want to live in a country where uh, even if I am in minority, I still have the right to do whatever the fuck I want if I don't violate any law, if I don't, if I don't violate any ethical norms, right? So even if my art and political practices are underground, even if I am in minority and not a lot of people want to live life like I do, 
um, it doesn't mean that I have to be in jail for that, right? If I'm not, if I'm not putting lives of any other people in danger because of my practices. And that was always my point. I never actually wanted to be in mainstream, but it kind of happened. <laughs> it kind of happened by itself. So a, a feminist and queer movements, they're getting more and more popular in Russia and um, back in the days, 30 years ago when we started our activism, I didn't think it's going to be the case. But today in 2021, I see so many young people are joining a queer movement. And um, I feel I feel like we are on the way to become a majority. Um, but um, closer to the initial question, why do, be, why do some people support Putin? Well, um, I believe that some people, they um, just don't have access still to um, certain sources of information, right? Because um, we think about um, our globe as um, totally, um, as, as everyone has access to internet, but not um, every person in Russia, not every person in the world has access to internet. And all of the media in, uh, when it comes to TV networks, they're Kremlin owned or Kremlin controlled. Uh, so people just don't have uh, alternative sources of information. And um, when we see the, uh, we see that with the changing of media consumption, uh, the support of Putin is falling down. So I think the more people um, subscribe to um, independent media channels in Russia, the more they get news from um, independent people, they, the more they will see that Putin actually is not a person who they can trust rule the country. And uh, I wanted to also, in this conversation, discuss with you the importance of words, Nadia. So I know that, Ibrahim, are you still on the line? You are a poet and words are part of your practice, but also building and, you know, organizing communities is also another. Um, what do you think is the, you know, how do you think words can support as well the next phase of, you know, I don't know, political action as we know it? And also, I mean, while we are it, before I give you the mic, uh, you know, I just would like you, Nadia, do you want to just tell us the, you know, like, I mean, I, I have the lyrics here of rage, but maybe it would be good to, I don't know if you want to say them in Russian or maybe you want to say them in uh, English, but I feel it's uh, a good time to maybe go through them, the lyrics of the song that, you know, has been published on the first. Yeah, let's do it. Why not? Um, I guess we'll do it in English because um, we decided to talk right now in English. I know that uh, a lot of people who are watching us, they would love me to talk in Russian and I will make a separate, um, I'll make a separate stream just in Russian. Um, and also I'll come um, I'll come back in the end of this conversation to some questions um, that people send to chat in Russian. But Nadia, you can, you can say it in Russian if you want and I can just share my screen anyway for whoever is, want to have the um, question. Well, no, I think I'll stick, I'll stick to English because it just like, it will be less confusing for everyone who, who is here right now, right? Um, so initially the song was called Heretic and um, based, uh, and, and it was recorded on a different beat, uh, but I didn't like it, um, I didn't like it enough. And so I decided to re-record the whole thing on a completely different beat. And I recorded it with Chris Gariati and we renamed the song from uh, Heretic to Basic, which means a rage or literally it enrages me. And so the main concept of the song is heretic. And um, the song um, was written, up, uh, the lyrics was written a long time ago, actually in 2018. Um, and I'm talking about my experience of uh, feeling the enemy of the state in my own homeland. And um, the, all the pain that it brings me, um, but also I wanted to share um, you know, how, how conflicted I feel when, um, when I'm in a heretic, because on the one hand, on the one hand, uh, all the repressive apparatus of the government um, is used against me and my friends. On another hand, I'm having the most beautiful community ever because under this pressure, friendships are thriving. So um, this song has this, you know, sweet pain um, of, um, of being heretic. And I reference a lot things like uh, Hammer of Witches uh, because I remember about witch 
trials and uh, I'm remembering about those times when strong, powerful women who didn't want to live with their husbands or, you know, be um, the ownership of their dads, um, they were labeled witches. And I feel like weirdly enough in 2019, 20, and 2021, we still kind of live in the same uh, era because and nowadays, uh, feminist activists, they are being, um, they're facing jail for things like painting, um, painting vaginas. Like a feminist artist, Yulia Tsvetkova, who you definitely should know and support, Yulia Tsvetkova is her name. Uh, she, um, she was posting um, her drawings uh, with symbolic vaginas where she was, um, it's like sex positive, uh, body positive drawings um, about things like, you know, uh, menstruation is fine and we can talk about menstruation, you know, the thing that you can see um, basically every day. So she was singled out and she, they, they opened a criminal case against her. Um, another crime of hers was to po post um, Georgia O'Keefe's um, flower that somehow resembles vulva, right? That was her, that's, this was her crime. She was accused of pornography and now she faces three years in jail for that. Um, so what's happening right now, I see as new witch trials. That's why I, I came to this idea of heretic and how, how does one feel when they're labeled as heretic. And Ibrahim, are you there as well? I want to hear from a poet perspective too. Tell us. Hello. So first and foremost, I would say, be blessed, Nadia, for what you're doing, because that's why, you know. I mean, I, I believe that what's happening right now in Russia is happening all over the world, but uh, it takes people who get out of their way like you do to somehow um, force people to focus on these issues. I personally don't watch TV or the news, stuff like that. So I miss out on a lot of these things. And if it wasn't, I mean, your question really is, is uh, the sort of important importance of word, but if Nadia didn't talk to you and you too didn't talk to us, we wouldn't be here, but now we are, and we have that sort of agency now to keep on spreading that message. Um, I think it's quite funny because in the morning I woke up and I listened to this podcast uh, from Emeka Okeke, who is a Nigerian photographer and uh, he was interviewing a Bangladeshi photographer. Um, I don't have his first name, but uh, only his uh, surname, but it doesn't really matter. The, 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 the point being uh, is that a similar uh, sort of situation happened to him. He's in his fifties now, uh, but earlier growing up, he was trying to um, sort of speak against the sort of unfairness of the government and he ended up in jail as well. Um, these are situations that happen all the time, but most of us, we just uh, carry on with our lives because it's easier and we, we don't have that courage, right? To just uh, continue or sort of speak up and actually share words uh, that uh, may have consequences and um, sort of scare people off or uh, trigger certain governments uh, who don't necessarily uh, have um, an agency or perhaps uh, our best interests. So yeah, I would say be blessed for that. I don't have any to go back to what, uh, uh, what, what was his name? I forgot, I'm sorry. Um, the, the gentleman who was speaking earlier. Christ. I don't have yeah. I don't have beef with the Christ. I believe in 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 God actually. So I will share all my prayers to you and to the ones uh, your loved ones who are now um, dealing with the the the, the, the prison and jail. Um, Thank you. Perhaps I, I wanted. I, I had a question uh, because and that's perhaps a little bit out of our current conversation, but it's still linked with it. Because um, it's been asked by someone on the internet, how can Putin be, and I paraphrased, be uh, so influential to so many people in Russia? And you answered, uh, perhaps because people are not 
informed uh, properly and take decisions based on this misinformation. But I know that during the past year, um, Putin and the people working with him had uh, started to re-engage with economical and, and political um, arrangements uh, with African countries. And a lot of uh, these African governments um, have taken that as an opportunity to somehow push uh, the old colonies out of their borders and therefore welcomed Putin. But again, I believe that these decisions are taken partially, but are you in your communication? And I said, you, I, I remember you said that you don't have any borders in the way you conceive and move in the world, but do you also plan on uh, basically engaging uh, with certain African communities who are now uh, perhaps close to being more controlled or perhaps uh, have to deal with more directions from Putin and who would benefit from having uh, more grounded informations about what is happening and the loss of uh, their freedom, right? Uh, so yeah, that's that's my question. If it's clear, thank you, Ibrahim. <laughs> yeah, I think we got it. And maybe Nadia, you want to talk about the media zone? Um, I I want to talk about Africa um, because actually it's um, um, I I think I think um, actually the much better person who would speak on this issue is another member of Peter Riders, Peter uh, Peter Brzezilov, um, because uh, he is being making an investigation of um, interests of one Russian oligarch, Yosef Prigozhin, uh, in Central African Republic. Mm -hmm. And he was about to go there with a group of journalists in 2019. Oh, or it was, it was in 2018. What was the year of the Football Cup? World Cup, 2000. 18, 2018. So uh, it was the year uh, when he was about to go to um, Central African Republic with his friends um, who, and later he couldn't go because he was arrested. And actually that arrest saved his life because those investigative reporters, they um, were murdered in um, Central African Republic for trying to investigate the shady deals of this Russian oligarch. Um, so then later, Peter was uh, making his own investigation of what, ha what happened with this um, journalist. And later, he was poisoned with a nerve agent. And uh, later, he was moved from Moscow to um, Charité Hospital in Berlin. So um, I'm saying because um, I know that Peter has much uh, bigger knowledge and he's a big Mm. expert on what's happening but I know that we have members of our community who are communicating um, with uh, people in Central African Republic and also um, recently Peter and um, Varlamov uh, one of uh, one of the um, big journalists in Russia they've been detained in South uh, Sudan uh, when they were trying to make some other investigation, but I would not dare to talk without them about it because they clearly know much more about it. But I just, I, I wanted to let you know that this work um, is happening. And then Media Zona as well. So your chief editor is currently being put in jail. So you have like released, like Pussy Riot has got their own media outlet too. So you're building your own form of information too, which I think is super interesting for what we're talking about here too. But, yeah. yeah, for sure. But it focuses more on Russia. And uh, and recently, we also report um, on Belarus a lot. So I'm aware that it's already an hour that we, we're talking together. And I know that you have very important work to do. So I don't want to take you away from, uh, you know, the work that needs to be done. Uh, but uh, maybe I don't know if you want to go through, like, I, I have more questions that are coming in the chat box. There is, uh, you know, there is people mentioning and talking about Trump and Obama. I mean, obviously, we are not so much specifically looking at American politics here in this. Uh, no, I would not be interested in we will do that. politics right now. Yeah, because, I, I, I mean, my main focus is um, definitely yeah. Russian political prisoners. Exactly. So as long as we somehow can keep this conversation uh, about them. So I just want to encourage uh, all of you again to, I mean, even if you will, if you're not able to make an action or a music video or anything like that, or 
go to rally um at least post in social media because i know that a lot of people think that social media is crap it can be crap definitely if you let social media use you but if you try to be conscious about it and um use internet hygiene then um you can actually use social media for good and we've seen in 2020 that um social media actually kept people together throughout um this pandemic and uh, they helped them to organize um even at those moments when they couldn't actually actively go out to the streets and let's and let's uh, make a grand finale by asking our friends if they have any urgent question to ask you that will bring some light anyone that want to pops up do do speak up so we hear you and you pops up on our screens do we have anyone that have like an urgent question that they want to ask nadia Tom or anyone in when, you know, Citraca, Xiaoji, feel free to just pop in or not. Well, yes, no. Ребята, есть какие-то вопросы на русском? Если если сейчас ничего не появляется, я могу сделать там отдельный стрим, просто отдельно потом говорим, поговорим по русски. Okay. 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 You're you're answering the question, yeah? I'm not answering the question. I was asking if um, if they have um, the question. So if you uh, answer the question, uh, if you ask the question earlier, just copy and paste it because I may not be able to read all of these questions that I'm seeing in front of me. So I can so, tell you a few that I see. So do you believe coronavirus crisis will lead to the death of capitalism? How do we oppose somebody that has a 80% approval rating? I think we kind of cover that. How can people like me who live in the US support your movement from Russia? We told you do support social media and so forth as well as putting work out there nadia i keep your letter from prison as a lyric i don't know henry morgan i don't know if you remember who that person is are there any petition or donation we can do to help yes you can there it's all inside the um uh, the bio of this youtube page where you can find it all question for the activist uh, do you believe that your art or want your outcome exceed your lifetime? How do you feel that you may not enjoy the fruit of your action? Well, I, uh, yeah, okay. I don't know if you want to take that one. Uh, what form of response do you respect, expect from the EU? And how can the EU help Russia get through this? And finally, 90% of them were innocent people who think they are creating more. Uh, how okay, let's, let's talk about EU. Oh. Let's talk about um, the um, international responsibility. So the thing we need to know about Russian bureaucrats, the thing we need to know about Russian elites, um, and the thing that actually Navalny investigations showing brilliantly, um, that all of their interests, they are not in Russia. Um, they are moving all the wealth that they gained, uh, well, quite frankly, stole from Russian people, and they're moving into uh, European countries and sometimes to the United States of America. And that's fine to, because uh, since I'm an anarchist, since uh, it's, it's fine when people travel. It's not fine when people steal money from Russian taxpayers um, and they um, claim that they're patriots. They claim that all the West is foreign agents. They claim that the West is terrible and nobody has to ever travel to the West. But actually, they have all of their life savings and, and all of their financial interests, all, all of their families living in the West. So that's what I call hypocrisy. Um, and I would definitely love um, European and American governments and institutions to just follow the money and actually see where uh, all this money come from. Um, and um, you know, use personal sanctions against Putin and his closest circle because I think that's one of the most um, effective things that um, the officials um, all around the world can do. And uh, what I wanna stress, there should not be sanctions against regular citizens of Russia. There should not be sanctions against the whole sector. It makes life of an ordinary person from Russia worse, and that's not what we want. Okay, last question that I would like to take is the question about whether you believe in a unscrupulous change of власти. Of course, I only бескровную смену, смену власти и верю, потому что мне кажется, что революция в 21 веке тоже не обязательно быть, а, должны а, осуществляться кроваво, они не должны осуществляться кроваво. И есть много, а, есть много 
примеров того, как это проходило бархатно, и я думаю, что ровно так и должно произойти. Потому что, знаете, насилие мы не приемлем. Do you want to take more questions or shall we close it? Yeah, I mean, we're going to have many more of this conversation. We're going to bring in like all... Absolutely. We, we let's, gonna... let's close it for now because I already make no sense because I want to pee. <laughs> Here you go. So that's like going to be the closure of our conversation for today. But I want to make that clear to everybody that is watching there that we're going to be running a lot of those. There will be more happening on Pussy Riot uh, YouTube page in the coming days, weeks. Uh, there will be more conversation from different intellectual activists and we will all be thinking together as to, and not just thinking, thinking in action, I think that's the key thing, thinking in action as to uh, how we can try and get our friends out of jail there where they are fighting for freedom, free, fighting for freedom of thinking and also for plurality. And meanwhile, do support Pussy Riot. Uh, Masha is still uh, under arrest. So anything you can do, go into the, um, there is the, um, the bio into the YouTube page where you can find all of the different links, the patterns, uh, the PayPal, the Venmo, uh, you know, just keep on supporting uh, Pussy, Riot, Pussy Riot in their very important work and ideas and also all of their friends, all of the colleagues in Russia. Uh, we, we stand with you, all of us today, and we will be still there, you know, still going and figuring out ways and interesting ways to actually like annoy, uh, you know, whoever is in Russia. I mean, if anyone is an art dealer that is also selling their work into, uh, you know, the home of Putin, anyone that is selling soap to the home of Putin, anyone that is selling any form of electricity or anything, then do email us, let us know who you are, and we will figure out some interesting ways to think about uh, political action as well there. So anyway, uh, Nadia, do you want to close this? Да, я хочу закрыть все вот этой картинкой. Вот, всем удачи, никакой крови, только бескровная смена, потому что если кто-то хочет с оружием противостоять целым отрядам ОМОН, то прям вот удачи. Единственное, что может помочь, это ненасильственное сопротивление. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And keep the fight, everybody. Keep going. Bye-bye-bye. Thank you, Nadia.